Just a bit of a video on one other issue which I have discovered with the Solark uh, during a blackout a couple of days ago. And that has to do with the battery state of charge indicator reset. Because this Solark is connected to a bank of flooded lead acid batteries. What happened is that over the course of running during the blackout we dropped down to about 80%. And then as soon as the battery started charging, because with lead acid the potential jumps up when you start charging it, um, the indicator reset to 100% even though thereafter the solar put another 9 kilowatt hours in the batteries. So yeah, having a state of charge monitoring algorithm which monitors um, power flow into and out of the battery, especially into because it looks like this algorithm is fairly dependent on operating potential of the battery to which it's connected because that works for things like lithium ion, uh, lithium iron phosphate, uh, much less so for lead acid because the operating potential tends to wander a bit up and down with uh, charging. Which are, yeah, again, not as efficient, but um, they have much greater tolerance for cold temperatures given that these solarks are in an unheated building. So yeah, that was something with uh, actually both of my solarks, both this one and this one over here. And one other improvement, given due to the nature of how this property is wired, the solark is feeding into a transfer switch which covers the entire property including the grid connection to the solar. So having the ability to monitor, in addition to the potential of the grid input, the phasing, so that way the solar, if it sees electricity on the grid, it can see if it's in phase with its load output, and then not trip an alarm necessarily because, you know, this isn't anything that interferes with system operation, but just have a little warning that pop pops up in say like a little notification something or other where it could just say change the icon of say something like that check mark there just hey there's something with the wiring of your system uh, you know I'm not going to close in the contactor because I'm feeding the grid that I'd be connecting to where this would also be very important is if it was able to detect not just that it was feeding the grid input that it would tie to, but also that L1 and L2 were reversed, because if the contactor were to close in on that, it would basically be a dead short, and then you'd have to pull the cover and probably replace the contactor, depending on whether or not the fault current uh, damaged the contacts in it. So yeah, um, we have two improvements. Otherwise, you know, handle the blackout with, without a hitch. Actually, the blackout only lasted a couple of hours, but I ended up leaving the whole property on the Solarks for a day just to see how they do. Which, uh, did good. Again, this is a, an issue which could easily be fixed. Um, especially the battery charging issue in software, just with improvements to their charge man management and uh, monitoring algorithms of the battery. And if the circuitry in the uh, Solark for AC monitoring doesn't have the ability to monitor phase, as well as potential and frequency, uh, then that is something to add to the next hardware rev, because I can see that being fairly important. And as a project preview, got some thingies. Moon. And there we have a cat. <laughs>